Oh, that's a nice day, Mr. Flanagan. Oh, I see you got a company, eh? Now, don't be poking fun at me, lady friend, you said me. <laughs> Top of the morning to you, Mrs. Davis. Tis prettier you're getting with each passing day. Now, Patrick, I'll have none of your butter and blarney. Officer Flanagan, do you think my mother is pretty? I do on me honor, Billy, darling. And this new lady friend I brought you will vouch for the truth of me word. Thank you, Officer Flanagan. I do wish I could see what you look like. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's not silly, Mrs. Davis. You know, there's summer seas with the eyes in their head. And there's summer seas with the eyes in their heart. And that's the Lord's own truth. not much more that I can do for Nancy. Doctor, that doesn't mean that... No. But the best doctor in the world for her right now would be the sun.
Well, well, if it isn't my high-flying friend, Bobkite. I didn't expect to see you till spring. Well, this is sort of an unexpected trip. You see, my friend here, Raggedy Ann, has something of extreme importance she wants to talk to you about. Why, I'd be glad to speak to her. Well, Raggedy Ann, what can I do for you this bright, sunny day? But it isn't a bright, sunny day down where we are. And I'm afraid something awful will happen to our Nancy. They say that you are the greatest doctor in the world. And I'm sure if you'll just see her, she'll get well. Please, Mr. Sun. Well, this is a rather embarrassing. Uh, you see, at this time of the year, the sun doesn't even shine bright in my old Kentucky home. That is, unless Cloudy moves out of the way and lets me peek through. Sometimes I get burned up about it myself. Wouldn't Mr. Cloud let you see our Nancy for just a little while? I'm sure if you ask him that way, he couldn't refuse. Now, if you'll just slide down this sunbeam, you'll find him on yonder cloud bank. Thanks awfully, Mr. Sun. Clouds while snow's still around. Zero, not me, is the one to see. When he melts snow, then I can blow. Zero. That old icicle hangs on till the last day of winter. I must see Mr. Zero. I'm blowing his way. Glad to fly you there. Sit tight, Raggedy Ann. Take care. Preposterous, absolutely unheard of. Why, I... Oh, Nancy is dreadfully sick. If Mr. Breeze can blow Mr. Cloud out of the way, Mr. Sun can look down on our Nancy and make her well again. And just what has all this to do with me? Why, Breezy isn't allowed to blow till you melt all the snow. Melt all the snow? I still have two weeks to go. Have you no respect for tradition? Couldn't you make an exception just this once? Oh, why, uh, uh, that's ridiculous. But Mr. Zero... But nothing. That's final. Cheers. 
somehow it seems like a miracle. the story of Susie. She was a beautiful new car, and she sat in a big auto showroom all day long, flirting with the people passing by. One day, her flashing grill caught the eye of a neat little man in suit. When he saw Susie, it was love at first sight. Isn't she a beauty? Why, she's the sweetest little car money can buy. I know you'll be happy with her. Now, if you'll just sign here, my friend, she's all yours. Yeah, it was as simple as that. And Susie was sold. Susie was a happy little car. She glided down the avenue. The minute she stepped out on the main drag, Susie found herself in pretty fast company. But then she had a lot of pep and pick up, and she soon learned her way around. Susie loved the parking lot society, where she could rub fenders with the best of them. She met all the big wheels, big cabs, dignified limousines. It was a great place to make new contacts. <laughs> Sorry. At the end of the day, it felt mighty good to be home in her own cozy little garage where she could just relax and let her tires cool off. But as asked, Susie's mileage rolled up and she began to show her age. Great <laughs> of trouble. And she was losing some of her old pep and pickup, too. Hey! Get the stolen! Get moving! <laughs> Susie was all run down and long overdue for a checkup. She's in pretty bad shape, mister. Fact is, she needs a complete overhaul. No, no. What I need is a new car. Come in and see Maniac Martin. <laughs> we're not selling them, folks. We're giving them away. <laughs> we know we're crazy, but look at the... What was to become of Susie? Who would want a worn-out old coupe? Take this here old blue clump. 
Now it was back streets and dark alleys. Susie was on Skid Row. Susie was left out in the cold. <laughs> Abused, neglected, she soon lost all her self-respect. It was plain to see that she was getting out of line. One dark night, as she sat all by herself on a lonely street, a stranger stepped out of the shadows. Her oil ran cold. Susie was a stolen car. Calling car 47. Watch for stolen car. Small blue coupe. License number A72. At last, the end had come. She was a battered old wreck, and they dragged her away to the junkyard. Susie had come to the end of her road. About fifteen dollars? Oh, gee whiz! I've only got twelve fifty. Well, take her away, son. She's all yours. They stripped her fenders, chopped her top, shackled her down, and hopped her up. She felt fifty thousand miles younger. It was a miracle. That's what it was. And it couldn't have happened to a nicer little car. for this day, so happy birthday to you, the buzzard. Well, no, that's mighty neighborly, the buzzard. What well, now, a book. Just what I've always never wanted. Lions rarely live beyond the age of 10 years. 10? 
ten years. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Kushla McCree. One, two, three, four, uh, five, yep, six, seven. Yep, it's a ten, all right, Leo. Absolutely right. You're not getting any younger, Leo. Nope, uh, no younger. Not getting any younger, he says. Well, I'm not getting any older, neither. <laughs> Slip this on for size. Oh, the everlasting nerve! You can't even wait till I'm decently deceased before you try to devour me. Oh, I know you went and hurt my feelings. I'll hurt more than your feelings, you carnivorous canary. Temper, temper, Mr. Lion. <laughs> You shouldn't exert yourself like that, Mr. Lyle. Come down here, you molten seagull! <laughs> no, 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 I couldn't do that. Oh, no, no. Prepare to defend yourself, then. I'm coming up after you. Careful, Mr. Lion. Uh, toodaloo. <laughs> Mr. Lion, I'll get you down. Yes, sir, have you down in a jiffy. Now, 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 now wait a minute. Don't bother yourself at all. I'll, I'll be getting myself down. No friend of mine's going to get himself down. No, no friend of mine. For you. You're never going to get me. Never! 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 <laughs> I fooled him. I fooled him. He'll never get me up here. <laughs> oh, well, uh, uh, Leo, uh, what kept you? Him 
might as well eat me now and have done with it. But tis hoping you're talking on me, I am. Oh, I'm sorry, Leo. Uh, I can't eat nothing but marshmallows. Uh, but have one. Starts going to school today. Wake up, dear. Wake up, dear. Wake up! Dear. Oh, Mother, your howling scared this howling. Really, it did. Now, it's very important to get an education, because we owls have quite a reputation. Now, here's your great great grandfather. This is your uncle. He was always cooking with gas. And here's a cousin that's really buzzing. Oops, this playbird was the black owl of the family. Goodbye, Mother. I'll be an honor student. Honest, I will. With my new pair of breeches and fancy tie, I'm on my way to school. Starting kindergarten, I'm nobody's fool. Gonna learn reading, writing, and arithmetic. Big words won't make me squirm. And you can quote me, they'll promote me twice in every term. In every subject, I will pass with honors from A to Z. And I'll show every kid in class I come from a real smart family. Now I'm off to the classroom to meet new friends and stay with them till noon. So I'm just starting kindergarten. I'll be graduating soon. You can't eat me now, Mr. Wolf. Really, you can't, because I have to go to school. This thing getting away from me. Is. This is for you, teacher. Really, it is. Ah! <laughs> uses me choice pupil. And for that, you get the choices seat. Oh, teacher! Oh, teacher! I can't see you! Now we must start cooking with the first lesson. One, two, I like you. Three, four, lock the door. Five, six, chop some sticks. Seven, eight, lay them straight. Nine, ten, Aisha again. Oh, 
dear. I must hurry with Junior's lunch. Yes? I'm Junior's mother. Mmm. What a delicious dish. Well, what a healthy mother. Mmm. So tender and tasty. <clears throat> this way, madame. in the bank, folks. You better buy a fistful of tickets on Lightning. I'm telling you, you can't lose. Race if I have to drag you around the track. Come on! <laughs> 
Marty. Get a good grip on your stubs, folks. All the horses are now at the starting gate. But White hasn't put in his appearances yet. <laughs> Mason Arnie bid for the lead. Yards to the length behind. Saver is tied by Whisker. Two ball is in the pocket. So now! And now Lightning's time to close the gap as he tears up the train. There they are, running neck and neck. What a race, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be close. And now there's Lightning on the far train, hugging the rail. Please, Lightning, please! We just gotta win this race! And as the horses approach the final hurdle, they show their heels to... It's only a matter of seconds now, folks, as they need a finish line. And it looks like Lightning is out of the race! Lightning! Lightning! What's happened to Lightning? He's going like a blue streak! 